All right, guys, we are picking up right where we left off last week. If this is your first video that you found, hit pause, go down to video description bar, click the link that'll take you to the first part of our discussion of iambic pentameter and Shakespearean sonnet structure. But now, you guys, we are ready to jump into looking at a couple of these poems. So the first one I've chosen for you is his most famous. It's Sonnet 18, Shall I Compare These to a Summer's Day? I'm going to read it to you once all the way through, because remember, that's one of our steps is just to read it through and get the gist, and then you go back in and you iron out the difficult parts. All right, so just listen as I read and see if you kind of get the general idea of it, and then we'll break it down after. Shall I compare thee to a summer's day? Thou art more lovely and more temperate. Rough winds do shake the darling buds of May, and summer's lease hath all too short a date. Sometime too hot the eye of heaven shines, and often is his gold complexion dimmed, and every fair from fair sometime declines, by chance or nature's changing course untrimmed. But thy eternal summer shall not fade, nor lose possession of that fair thou owest, nor shall death brag thou wanderest in his shade, when in eternal lines time thou growest. So long as men can breathe or eyes can see, so long lives this, and this gives life to thee. Aw, that is super sweet. As you go through the gist round of understanding a poem, clearly it's a love poem, right? One person is comparing another to a beautiful summer day and saying that, let's say it's a guy and a girl, and the guy is saying the girl is way hotter, <laughs> actually way more beautiful, may way more lovely than a summer day. All right, now I want to break down some structure things. We're going to dig into it to understand what's happening here. So last week we talked about the sonnet structure, right? It's 14 lines, and of course this one is, and it has the perfect Shakespearean sonnet rhyme screen. Rhyme, it's hard for me to say. Rhyme scheme. I think I said rhyme scream, which is probably what you want to do, but it's a rhyme scheme. And the way we say this is A B A B C D C D E F E F G G. And I've color coded it here just so you could see how the rhymes work. Basically, the um, in the first four lines, every other line rhymes, and then that pattern repeats for lines five through eight, and then again through nine through 12. And then we have that rhyming couplet in lines 13 and 14, as you guys can see right here. So let's go through it and I'm gonna go wherever the natural breaks are. When we read poetry, you're gonna follow the punctuation, not necessarily the end of the line. So be mindful of that, okay? So shall I compare thee to a summer's day? Yeah, I shall, and I'm going to for the next 13 lines. That's what's happening here. Thou, you, are more lovely, and more temperate. So temperate might be one of those words that you have to look up. It means even, right? Like not too hot, not too cool. It's just lovely. Okay. Rough winds do shake the darling buds of May. The problem with spring is that there's a lot, it's especially here in Idaho, boy, May is super windy. And so it's not good. And, and the beautiful little flowers, they get shaken around in line four and summer's lease hath all too short a date. Summer is way too short. You know this from vacation, right? Like just as you're starting to relax, it's time to go back to school. Line five, sometime too hot the eye of heaven shines. It just means it's really hot outside. It gets to be 100 degrees. And often is his gold complexion dimmed. His gold complexion. So we have some personification here. His is the sunshine, right? And often is his gold complexion dimmed, probably like by clouds. Line seven, and every fair from fair sometime declines by chance or nature's changing course untrimmed. That's probably the first difficult set of lines that we have here. And every fair from fair sometime declines. Fair meaning beautiful or beauty. And every beautiful thing declines from beauty by chance or nature's changing course untrimmed. Sometimes just time passes and things are not as beautiful as they used to be. Nothing gold can stay, pony boy, right? From the outsiders, that, that beautiful sunset, five minutes later, it's just kind of gray, right? It's gone away. When you're leaving for school in the morning and you see a beautiful blossom on the, on the rose bush outside your driveway, by the chance you come home from school, maybe the flowers have wilted a little in the sun or a bug has eaten one of the petals and it's just not as beautiful as it was. So it's by chance, the bug, or that's just the way nature is, right? It always, it always changes. Number nine, but thy eternal summer 
shall not fade. Now look, we have a swing here. Last week we talked about a hinge word and that's what's happening on line nine. But that's what this poem is really about. And that is about your eternal sunshine, my dear. You are so lovely and so beautiful. Your light will never fade. Number 10, nor lose possession of that fair thou owest. You'll never lose that beauty that you have. Number 11, nor shall death brag thou wanderest in his shade when in eternal lines to time thou growest. Even when you die, hottie, you're still going to be beautiful. Death will not conquer your beauty. And then I'd say line 12 is the hardest. When in eternal lines to time thou you growest, you become even more beautiful in time even after death. And you're like, what? How can that be? How can grandma be more beautiful? So there's a couple of ways to read line 12. When in eternal lines, like the lines that a poet is writing, like Shakespeare just wrote in Sonnet 18, right? Here we are. It's, you know, 2020. Oh my gosh. And here we are still talking about how beautiful this person was. So poetry can be eternal lines. And then even if a poet doesn't memorialize you, you will likely have eternal lines in your lineage, in the lines of your family, right? Your kids will be beautiful and your kids' kids will be beautiful and your great grandkids will be beautiful. That is your eternal line as well. So it's not clear what the poet means, or the narrator means here, but whatever it is, it's lovely. And then number 13 and 14 are pretty straightforward. So long as men can breathe or eyes can see, that means forever. So long lives this and this gives life to thee. So you will live forever. Your beauty will always be remembered because you are super awesome and you are super hot. <laughs> okay. So there you go. There is shall I compare thee to a summer's day. Now that is pretty straightforward, right? We kind of get it. This next one. Oh, and there you go. Zoom in. I probably should have done that one before I read it, but oh well. All right. Next one is my favorite one. All right. See if you can glean the meaning as I read Sonnet 30 and I'm going to zoom in. Nope. Nope. I'm not zooming in. See, I tricked myself there. All right, here we go. Sonnet 130. I'm going to read it through. Get the gist. My mistress's eyes are nothing like the sun. Coral is far more red than her lips red. If snow be white, why then her breasts are done. If hair be wires, black wires grow on her head. I have seen roses damasked red and white, but no such roses see I in her cheeks. And in, in, and in some perfumes is there more delight than in the breath that from my mistress reeks. I love to hear her speak, yet well I know that music hath a far more pleasing sound. I grant I never saw a goddess go. My mistress, when she walks, treads on the ground. And yet, by heaven, I think my love as rare as any she belied with false compare. Ooh, a much, di a very different take on a Shakespearean love poem. Some of you are probably like, oh no, he didn't. He did not just say she's got wiry hair and yucky skin and stinky breath. Um, but he kind of did. But then he gets me, I actually say this is the most romantic of the sonnets because it's based on real love. And we have it with the swing, right? Um, and yet by heaven, and yet is the swing on line 13. He loves her even with her flaws, right? So like he sees her for who she is. She's not a goddess with roses in her cheeks. She's a woman and he loves to hear her speak. He loves what she has to say. And I think my love is rare. He loves her with such a deep rarity as any she belied with false compare, with any of those dime store Romeos who said, you know, you know, shall I compare thee with a, to a summer's day and all that good stuff. Um, I, I'm a realist. I'm a practical kind of gal. Um, Mr. Randazzo has my heart and I think he loves me this way, right? He loves me with bedhead and brings me a cup of coffee and, you know, gives me a kiss and says I look gorgeous even when I know I don't. And, you know, we, we've got that kind of realistic love that lasts. So I hope that you can have more like Sonnet 130. I think we start with, you know, Sonnet 18, right? Everything's lovey-dovey, but real lasting love is much more like Sonnet 130 to me. Feels good to me. Also, um, make sure that you can understand uh, the rhyme scheme um, and the iambic pentameter. So it has the perfect iambic. My mistress eyes are nothing like 
the sun. So it has that 10 beat. You can kind of do that through the whole poem, just like on sonnet 18. And you have your rhyme scheme, right? Lines one and three, sun and done rhyme, red and head rhyme, white delight, cheeks reeks, no go, sound ground. And then it ends with the rhyming couplet, rare compare. All right. I hope this was fun for you and you enjoyed digging into it. You got to love a little bit of poetry. There's some good stuff in there. All right. If you have questions about this, leave them in the comment section below. Otherwise, I will just see you next time. You guys know we have Mondays is Mechanics Usage and Grammar. We do a little proofreading work. Wednesdays, we get into some high-level SAT words. We're wrapping up the school year, but I have a few more weeks to go. So I've got a couple more words, word lists coming at you. And then next Friday, we always have a fun little drop of high school English skill builder. And I'll be back with more of that for you guys on Friday as well. If you enjoyed this one, hey, give me a thumbs up. It's hard talking about poetry on YouTube. Like, I feel, who's out there listening to this? You're out there. And I think that's awesome. So give me a little thumbs up. Let me know you're out there. I appreciate it. All right, you guys, I'll see you on Monday for grammar stuff. Have a great weekend. Bye.